So you know I'm always looking for the best supplements for osteoporosis because managing osteoporosis yourself is such a gift and for many it is possible. Stick around for this video because we're going to talk about an over-the-counter supplement that has surprisingly powerful research on its impact on bone mineral density. So we're going to go through that research, how we use it, when we use it, and what we're doing with this product and our full-service patients. Stick around. So what is this over-the-counter product that is both cheap and widely available? It's DHEA. So what is DHEA? DHEA is dehydroepiandrosterone, and that is really hard to say, so moving forward, I'm just gonna say DHEA. But DHEA is a steroid hormone that is produced primarily by the adrenal glands. Those are those little glands that sit on top of your kidneys that make other stress hormones like cortisol uh, and adrenaline uh, or epinephrine, depending on what side of the ocean you are from. So in smaller amounts, DHEA is produced also in the testes or the ovaries, also in the brain. It's kind of produced in little amounts all over the place. And one of the reasons for that is that it's a precursor to the steroid hormones, testosterone and progesterone. Now, from an anti-aging perspective, it's interesting because this is one of those things that actually declines with age and one of those things that we do start supplementing for people when they're on their health optimization pathway um, because it simply goes away and we need it to maintain or optimize testosterone and progesterone in both men and women. So some of the areas where we use this supplement in the health optimization space is in anti-aging, it's in mood and cognition, immune function, metabolic benefits, and of course, osteoporosis. So whenever we start looking at a supplement as a potential tool for osteoporosis, we kind of dig into the literature in a uh, usually a, a typical fashion where we're looking for either meta-analysis or reviews of the thing because somebody's already done this research and I want to know what they think. So for DHEA, there was a review that was published recently in 2020, and this is kind of cool. And basically what they said in this review, I'm just going to read their conclusion, which is all studies reviewed demonstrated that older females, 50 to 80, they said that, not me, had increased bone mineral density with DHEA supplementation. And I'm thinking, all studies? Wow, that's pretty consistent. What could possibly be the mechanism? Well, one of the things they point out of this is that DHEA signals through the estrogen receptor to inhibit osteoclast function. And we know that osteoclasts are the cells that break down bone. And if you inhibit osteoclast function, you're going to lower breakdown and hopefully increase build up. And what we see is that's true as well. So DHEA increases osteoprotragrin, and that's relative to the rank ligand. I talk about this in other videos uh, that's coming out of osteoblasts. So rank ligand, again, is that receptor that we're messing with the drugs like prolia. And if you start messing with rank or decreasing rank, then you're going to see an increase in osteoblast differentiation and function. So the overall impact is decreased resorption by osteoclasts and hopefully a little bit of increased function in osteoblasts. So let's look a little bit deeper. So the second study I want to review is actually a meta-analysis. So this was interesting to find. So 2019 meta-analysis, and what this showed is that hip bone mineral density increased in women over placebo, but not men. Interesting. They also noticed that this biomarker IGF-1, which I talk about a lot in the anti-aging space, but IGF-1 increases in women, again, but not men. Their conclusion is that DHEA can partially increase bone mineral density, it's an interesting word, partially increase bone mineral density in women, but not men. So, all right, we're going to have to dig into this a little bit more. But before we do that, if you haven't already, if you could click that subscribe button, that is the best way to help me help others. For anybody that's looking for information about bone mineral density, about osteoporosis, about reversing osteoporosis, your subscribing to this channel will help them to find us. If you haven't also been to our masterclass and you want to learn about tips and tricks to improve your own bone health, then you should look for the link for that in the description below. It's absolutely free. And then lastly, if you haven't uh, downloaded and read our free ebook, or you can buy this on Amazon uh, if you like a physical book, you should also do that because it's a great jumping off point that I wrote myself. It is basically an introduction to our perspective of osteoporosis and how to improve bone health. Okay, so let's get into the good human research here. So when we look at the actual randomized control trials, the first one I pulled up here is a 2009 study, and it has 55 men and 58 women. 
So there were actually two groups here. So they used DHEA in a 50 milligram dose. They used 640 IU of vitamin D, which sounds pretty low, and we'll talk about that later. And they used 700 milligrams per day of calcium. They compared that group to a group that just had vitamin D and calcium. And what they noticed is that women who were on the intervention side, the DHEA side, their spine bone mineral density increased by 1.7% during one year and 3.6% during the second year. Now, what's cool about the study is they also measured testosterone, estrogen, and again, IGF-1, and all of those were increased in women in the DHEA group. So their conclusion was that DHEA in older women, but not men, improves the spine bone mineral density when administered with calcium and vitamin D. And you can actually see that in this uh, figure one from the study where you can see the improvement in bone mineral density over time in the DHEA group. All right, now this next study was from 2008 and this was a randomized control trial with 225 participants. Actually a pretty big study. I'm gonna read the title here. This is called The Effect of Dehydroepiandrosterone Supplementation on Bone Mineral Density bone markers and body composition in, again, older adults. And they call this the DAWN trial. So there's a cool acronym there. So this was another 12-month study, again, using 50 milligrams of DHEA. Now, there were some challenges here in interpretation. So when if you ever look this study up, you'll see that the numbers look a little bit odd. But basically, they measure DHEA, DHEA sulfate, testosterone, and estrogen. So for us, basically what we had to do was convert everything. And so basically the men and the women were able to achieve about a, a level of 350 micrograms per deciliter, which is how we measure uh, DHEA. Uh, and that's a pretty high level for women. And there's a, a kind of high level for men. I'm going to talk about that discrepancy here in a little bit. Testosterone in women, they were able to actually bump that up to around 30 nanograms per deciliter, uh, which is uh, kind of low to moderate for us. So we still consider that not high enough, um, but it's higher than, particularly in postmenopausal women, it's higher than the average. Um, and there was a similar increase in estradiol. So we were able to increase estradiol through uh, DHEA alone, and it's because uh, 50 milligrams is a, actually a pretty big dose. Now, they also measured CTX which is the breakdown biomarker of bone, and they measured IGF-1, uh, which is our what I would consider our anabolic catabolic switch. I'm gonna do a whole video on IGF-1 here uh, based off of what I've read over these last couple of studies. What they found is that they did see a statistically significant reduction in CTX and an increase in IGF-1. So what does that mean? That means that we're slowing down bone resorption and we're increasing anabolism, which is building muscle and bone. Their conclusion was that bone mineral density improves in the spine again, in women, but not men. Now it's trending in men, it's almost there, but it's not quite there. We're gonna talk about why. To really understand why, there was actually a study that we can point to. Now this is an older study, this is from 2002, but this is a randomized control trial of 86 men. Cool. Now, here's the difference. In this study, they're using 100 milligrams of DHEA. That's a big dose of DHEA. Um, it was only over six months, but we were able to see some benefits in that six month time frame, We did see an increase in bone mineral density of 2.82% in the spine, 2.32% in the femoral neck. Now what's also interesting in this study is they measured free testosterone, estradiol, and PSA, because they're worried about prostate issues, um, and they did not see a significant change in the hormone levels, even though they did see improvements in BMD. Their conclusion was, hey, look, this is safe and effective. It is an alternative to potentially using hormones uh, for bone health or other things for bone health because we are seeing some benefits. So I thought that was kind of a cool conclusion, especially at a big dose. What about risks? Well, I mentioned earlier that there are not a lot of risks of using DHEA. I will say, though, that we, we have used it a lot, and there are patients that don't tolerate it. Because it does push on the androgen side, it does um, uh, it does lean on being anabolic. For a lot of people, and I don't know what the percentage is, but I see it a, a fair number of times, women particularly, and men, but women particularly will develop acne, they will develop oily skin, um, and some women have seen some pretty significant hair loss. And this all has to do with the conversion of the androgens to DHT usually, which is dihydrotestosterone, which is the, the mo more active form of testosterone. Um, and this can be blocked. There are things you can do about that. But I have seen it even at low doses, five milligram, 10 milligram doses. So the conclusion I take from all of these studies is that DHEA could potentially be something that a lot of people could use for bone health, 
Um, it can also improve uh, maybe symptoms of uh, low hormones as well. And we have used it for that in the past in, in both men and women. But at the doses that they're using in these studies, 50 milligrams is a big dose for women. Um, and I've, I've not pushed that because I think we would see more side effects. And 100 milligrams is a big dose for men. So we're actually gonna change our protocols in some people and see if we're noticing an increase in side effects. I'm a little bit gun shy because again, I've seen some pretty significant side effects in postmenopausal women um, and hair loss is not something that a lot of people want to uh, experience. So then what product do we use? Well, like I always say about supplements, <clears throat> I don't have a supplement company that I recommend. There's not one particular company, but what I'm looking for are companies that demonstrate third-party testing for quality. I like companies that are made in the US, nothing against other countries. I just understand that if it's made in the US, if the, the raw materials are sourced in the US and they're keeping it all in one space, it's likely to be a higher quality. Um, I like companies that will that will control the product from start to finish. And then we're either getting it from that company, from that distributor, or from a distributor that gets directly from that company. And we trust that they are um, controlling things. Uh, they're controlling temperature, they're controlling shipping, and, and we are getting what we think we're getting. So in closing, I hope you found that helpful. If you haven't already, heard about the HealthSpan Nation. We launched this new product called the HealthSpan Nation. It is a group where I am so excited to bring people in who are aiming to optimize their life. And we are offering this for all of our patients as well as anybody who wants to join us to help aim for optimal, not average, and really try to support each other to be extraordinary because that's what it takes to both reverse osteoporosis, but also to live better longer. So if you're interested in doing anything like that, head over to drdouglucas.com. I'll see you inside.